What I was about to do didn't play out my mind, but rather what combination of events led me to this point in time. Nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start a day and make a new ending. I don't think today is that day. Lupin de Forte was an actor in the play of his life, putting on masks, rearranging facts to suit his purpose, and clouding himself in mystique. Consequently, he hides his eyes, believing them to surrender his demeanor. He also has a nervous habit of ripping things in half, like bills, cars and bundles of grass. He enjoys impromptu haircuts and on the weekend likes to blow out candles. He enjoys eating milk and cookies, a way of unwinding after a long and hectic week. However, he is not a fan of soggy foods such as noodles, soups and casseroles. He also does not like being without his clothes as he feels exposed and ashamed. He also has the rather obscure habit of putting things where they do not belong, such as typewriters in toilets, chicken in suitcases, and books nailed to lampposts. He also likes to save small insects. Lupin could not believe his eyes. He could not comprehend how someone could be so rude. This man is Lucifer Kotick. He emits an aura of absolute arrogance. His hobbies include stacking coins into tiny piles. He also enjoys smashing muffins. Repeatedly. However, when he gets nervous, he has the odd habit of shuffling cards over and over again. Not too far away, Marianne Ledeer is practicing her hobby. It is a little strange. She likes to pretend to do surgery on fruit. And one day she hopes to become an army nurse. Her friends find her strangely persuasive and quick-witted. The only thing that Marianne does not like is the country Libya. We do not know why. She enjoys taking long walks to smoke a single cigarette. Once she walked over four miles just for a smoke. On her way, she comes across a most peculiar character. He is Lupink, nailing a book where it does not belong. For some reason, she likes him and sends a smile his way. It is in this moment that she catches Lupin's heart. He is bewitched and decides he must follow her, but just after he has finished nailing his book to the post. Thank you.
yet Marion avoids his gaze. Why won't you smile at me? I think I saw her come this way. And I saw him. I think he said, How do you feel about not smiling at me now, bitch? I couldn't stand it. Oi! He got away, the prick. I asked her if she was okay. She looked at me with those eyes. And I told her I'd make him pay. And she whispered, The ultimate prize. I hesitated, but I said okay. Her lips felt like Persian cushion. And I left her. Being a clever little thing, Marion quickly turns the situation to her advantage. Hello? Yeah, hi. I think I've got a story you'd be interested in. I believe we can come to a mutual agreement that'll benefit both of us, if you know what I mean. You get the pictures, I'll give you the money. Here is where Lucifer likes to relax and unwind after a long days of tormenting people. He likes to reflect on the things he has done, such as pushing over small children and abusing old ladies. But what Lucifer does not know is that this will be the last time he will ever sit in his chair and reflect on the days that has passed. He hesitates again, yet the thought of Marion's soft Persian lips drives him forward. He was not surprised to see me for some reason. I didn't care. I decided to play a game with him. Draw a card, Lucifer. Do it. For some reason, he is compelled to still be a prick. Well, this was nice, heart to heart. With photographs taken, Marianne set in motion consequences that no one could foresee. And just like that, with his final deed, Lupin faded into the night.